You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Falls. What's going on, Ask Diecast Collectors and Diecast Viewers on YouTube? This is Original Big Bri here, and welcome, guys, to the first ever NASCAR Authentics Diecast, uh, well, not really Diecast Reviews. This is actually going to be a wave review, guys, uh, and you guys are probably wondering why I'm actually doing this. I know a lot of other people on YouTube decide to do this, and, um... Uh, Main purpose of that is because I want to separate this uh, from the NASCAR iCast news. I'm trying to make the NASCAR iCast news episodes as short as possible. So yeah, this this type of content has been cut from the iCast news and I decided to put it as a separate video. So uh, and plus, you know, I usually don't do wave reviews. Uh, I used to do the NASCAR Authentics iCast reviews, but this I, I don't actually have the wave with me. But this is going to be like some uh, first thoughts and opinions about. Uh, about the newest waves, especially for 2019, which by the way, guys, we got ourselves the first ever uh, wave for 2019 of NASCAR Authentics released from Lionel Racing. Now they just recently uh, um, revealed this like about like two weeks ago, I believe on one of their, um, you know, fix update videos. It wasn't really a full video, but it was like a fix update. But, um, and yeah, guys, uh, before I say anything, yeah, that these cars are all not 28, tw are all 2018 diecasts. So a lot of you guys could be pretty disappointed that uh, these aren't going to be 2019 diecasts. But guys, the 2019 NASCAR racket season is going to be on a pretty big delay from what we know so far from uh, from everything I know and from what uh, the rest of the diecast uh, dealers and uh, diecast sources have known. Um, especially with all the new castings that we got, like the Toyota Subra and the Ford Mustangs. We're probably not expecting those to come out in June, and for the Henrik diecasts, which usually those are the ones that come out first, we're not going to see them until March, so so I would say probably about maybe Wave 2 or Wave 3, we will probably get some chances of 2019 diecasts, but this is going to be an all-exclusive way, guys, like every single car in this wave, except for one, is an exclusive, so, and even better, all these cars are on the EL mold, guys, so I am happy to go ahead and just... Let's go ahead and start off this uh, first thoughts and opinions, uh, or I guess I could say review on wave not wave one of 2019. So, like I always do on my diecast news videos, uh, similar to this layout, I will be going ahead and show you guys all. Uh, we talk about all the diecasts that are going to be released for this. Uh, we do have um, well, like nine new cars to be talking about, including a liquid color exclusive. So, I mean, already looking like a great start for 2019 for uh, NASCAR Authentics with the disaster we've had from Wave 12. But um, you guys probably know what I thought about that wave if you guys haven't seen my rant video yet. But um, yeah, and I appreciate your guys' support on that. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and start this review, guys. So the first one up, we got Austin Dillon's number three, Dow Salutes, um, or the Veteran Salutes car that I believe he drove at the uh, Michigan Junior Race, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I believe uh, this car was also on, uh, was released on the pre-order list, along with um, the Michigan win that Austin Dillon um, won at. Yeah, a cup leech driver <laughs> um, with that Bass Pro Shops Cabela scheme. But both those cars were canceled in uh, both scales. Um, so, well, not both scales, but uh, both 164 scales. So, um, but, you know, pretty solid choice. Um, I, it's definitely a pretty underrated car, if I say so myself. But glad to see we got another uh, uh, Salutes car for um for, for the Dow scheme. I mean I think this car would go great and would be would make a great comparison video when I get this car to the um Coca Cola six hundred win from twenty seventeen since both those cars are kind of patriotic. So um you know I don't mind this. I, I think the the uh the pay, the um the uh Coca Cola six hundred win just looks a little bit better but um you know this this car might be underrated, it could be a peg warmer, but it is exclusive, so if you're a big fan of Austin Dillon, probably would recommend getting that car. Next up might be one of the first few cars that I will probably pass on for um, for the 2018 waves. It is uh, another exclusive car. We got Kevin Harvick's number four, Jimmy John's Kick and Ranch Ford Fusion. I almost said Mustang, but long behold, this is a 2018 car, guys. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's basically just like the Jimmy John scheme that we've got released twice now from uh, the 2018 waves. Um, so. If you're a big fan of the Jimmy John's scheme, uh, it will go great with the uh, with the original Jimmy John's car that was released uh, in 2018 of, what was it, uh, Wave 6, and also the Monster Energy NASCAR All-Star Race win from Wave 11. So, I mean, there are a few differences. Like, the paint scheme is a little more different. There is a lot more black on this car, but... Um, yeah, I mean, the hood definitely is very off-putting. Uh, if they could have went with, like, a black hood, I think it would look nice. But since it has a gray hood, I just I don't know. I'm not a big fan of how Stuart Racing is doing all these mixed max paint schemes, guys. I mean, uh, God almighty, have you seen the Clint Boyer? Uh, uh, the two, have you, I, I mean, I, I, overall, guys, I think just the Stuart Haas Racing... Um, 
cars uh, when they're doing the mixed match stuff or like the half paint schemes. I, I'm not a big fan of them. Like some of them work out well, but I think this was it was trying to go for that route, but just the gray hood looks so off-putting on this. Um, I'm probably not going to get it, but I believe he drove this car. Uh, I believe he drove it around, like, I want to say around the summertime, guys. I think he drove this at Chicagoland, the, um, and he drove this at two night races as well. I, I, I want to say Daytona and Bristol, I believe, because I do remember this car at Daytona. But um, I am a big fan of Ranch, but just unfortunately, this car ain't really quite kicking enough for me, if you know what I'm saying. There he goes again with the puns. <sighs> Great year to start off with this, Brian. <laughs> but next up, we got the fan favorite die cast, which is also going to be in a liquid color exclusive car. But we'll be talking about that soon, guys. We got Chase Elliott's number nine, Sun Energy One, Blue, Watkins Glen, first cup win. I mean, were you not surprised seeing this car was going to make it in NASCAR Authentics? And yes, this is the only car that is not exclusive, but just uh, overall, guys, I mean, this is a must. I mean, this is Chase Elliott's first win, and it came at Watkins Glen. Um, and this is the first time we've had a Watkins Glen race win, guys, since AJ Allmendinger's ironically first win as well from Spin Master in 2014. So um, I didn't even realize that until now. And both of them were Chevrolet drivers. So how about that, guys? A uh, <laughs> little fun fact history for uh, for the NASCAR Authentics fans out there. But um, yes, there is going to be another variant to this car, which I think is going to be super hard to find because. God almighty guys, the liquid color cars are already hard to find as it is besides the car that was released from Wave 12 since the Eric Jones car was all liquid color. So I find it funny that people are calling that car rare, but enough of me talk about that crappy wave guys. Back to uh, Chase Elliott's uh, uh, Watkins Glen win in the liquid color exclusive. Um, so this car definitely is going to pop out a lot more. I, I say, I mean, I'm not really a big fan of liquid color cars, but... God, I really would love to take the packaging out of this car just to look how shine, how, just to feel how shiny that car looks. Cause man, that chrome finish on this car easily is now my favorite paint scheme in the liquid color finish. I mean, God, I mean, look how far I come, guys. I used to not like liquid color cars at all or any kind of special finishes, but thanks to these NASCAR Authentics waves, guys, I really am starting to grow on them. So who knows? Maybe I'll get a liquid color car, uh, 124 eventually <laughs> in my, um, in my NASCAR collection. But um, back to what I said about this car, guys. And what's also another cool feature about this car that I did notice, I want to give a, a good shout out to Burris Nathan on Instagram. Um, he actually, um, him and Wimmer33 fan also on Instagram, um, both great uh, sources for um, for the diecast news. Um, they are also big fans as well, so shout out to those two. Um, they uh, actually got first dibs of the of this first wave, and uh, one of them actually got the um, liquid color chase car, I believe, and. Um, there's actually going to be a little sticker that is going to be on the packaging, kind of like how the uh, Dale Jr. Wave 88 uh, Junior Nation Appreciation Car was, where it said exclusive. Yeah, it's basically going to have that sticker like that again, but it's going to tell, it's going to say liquid color. So that's another great way to tell that this is a liquid color chase piece. I mean, um, you know, the, the Lionel knows how pop, the Lionel definitely knows how popular these cars are. So got to give them a lot of credit for that. But um, yeah, guys, I mean, go luck finding this car. This car is going to be really hard to find. <laughs> and I highly encourage you guys not check out eBay because <laughs> people love hunting for those cars and price gouges them like crazy. Trust me, I've been there. Next up, we got another exclusive car, and it is Clint Boyer's Carolina Ford Dealers Dawn's a Throwback, which you guys know if you are a big fan of the Jarrett family. This is a Dawn's a Throwback to Ned Jarrett. Kind of a similar scheme that David Reagan drove in 2011, but um, great to see another Carolina Ford Dealers car. Um coming back to nascar authentics i mean what this is like the third uh, uh well this is the second time we've had the clint boyer throwback in the wave of nascar authentics but the third one overall if you want to count the tony stewart one from 2015 or 2016 i believe um 2015 yeah so um you know can't go wrong with this i mean it's very basic but you know definitely got that nice throwback feel and the white rims on this just Beautiful looking car. Would recommend picking this up. Next up, uh, it, the throwbacks get even better, guys. We got Eric Jones number, uh, or uh, DW, I like to say. That Jones, boy. <laughs> oh, wait, I just got to say it. How about that one, boys and girls? <laughs> we got Eric Jones number 20 sport clips. Don's throwback, which if you guys do not know what this throwback is, too, it is a throwback to... Eric Jones' spotter, Rick Carnelli, guys. So if you guys remember, um, what Rick Carnelli, um, he did drove a couple races in all three series, but this paint scheme is mostly to represent his, uh, I believe his, um, what is mid 1990s, uh, I said mid 19, mid 1990s. So I want to say, I want, I want to say about like, 95, 96, or 97, one of those years, maybe 97, his, uh, number 20, um, well, not number 20, it was the number six, uh, Rebax truck. So, uh, really great representation. It might be a pretty underrated car, but if you do know Rick Carnelli and you are a big fan of him, 
this is a diecast to get right here. I mean, it was unfortunately canceled, and this will be the first time we will have a Dante Throwback Sport Clips car for Eric Jones. I mean, I know we've had the Danny Hamlin Sport Clips car from 2016 that was a throwback, which was pretty cool, but um, that would be a great addition to go along with that if you guys like the Sport Clips throwbacks, and Sport Clips looks like they only run at the Darlington races, so... Great addition right there. And the throwbacks get even better, guys. We got to talk about, oh, it's time to get hard for Menard. We got Paul Menard's number 21, Ford Mortarcraft, Dawn's throwback car. Yet another exclusive. And God almighty, that shiny 21. Got to love it. But this is a throwback to uh, Kale Yarbrough's uh, iconic number 21. Um, the good old Silver Fox himself, man. Uh, I mean, well, yeah, Kale Yarbrough just, man, just God, that 21. I mean, yeah, this paint scheme looks very, very similar to uh, Ryan Blaney's um Almost looks very similar to Ryan Blaney's throwback from 2016, but this is basically paying a tribute to Kale Yarbrough's first ever Darlington win at the Southern 500. So, um, really nice looking right there. Um, I'm, it's a shame that NASCAR couldn't let them have that Chrome 21 on the actual car, but glad to see Lionel was able to put that detail into this 164. And man, just overall, really nice looking car. I, I think this car also has a, a gray rims, I believe. Um, just going by that picture, I think it might have a very dark gray rims. If that's the case, then nice job line. Now, that's a really cool car. And I'm not really a big fan of Ford, but man, I mean, that that that, 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 that car just looks awesome. Next up, we got another Dawn to throwback car, which I think a lot of people saw this one coming, especially one of my good buddies, uh, Bushwhacker Reviews. He predicted, and guess behold, he was right, that this car was going to make it to a NASCAR Authentics wave. Well, probably not a 2019 wave, but you get the picture. We got to talk about um, probably one of the most disappointing uh, throwbacks that was canceled in the 164 scale. We got to talk about the fan favorite Joey Ligano Pennzoil throwback car, which is a throwback to Steve Park's uh, <laughs> iconic Pennzoil DEI car. My God, another car that screams childhood right at me. I mean, just the bright yellow, the black, I mean, just... Man, when you think of Pennzoil, you think of this car right here. Just awesome, and it was cool that they were able to get the DEI stripes on this. Uh, so thank God, he, uh, thank God, uh, Teresa Earnhardt didn't uh, get gotten to the ball with this, because otherwise this car would look really um, odd without those stripes. But my God, guys, I mean, I was so disappointed that this only got made in the 124 scale. When it got canceled on the 64 scale, I was like, well. Lionel, you got the NASCAR Authentics waves. You better make this happen. And what do you know? They did. So I'm proud of that. And definitely, definitely a must get, guys. I mean, if you decide not to get this car, I mean, I can safe to say you're not a NASCAR fan, especially if you were around that era in the 90s and the 2000s. I mean, this car is just so iconic. You can't go wrong with it. Next up, another Johnson throwback car, which is the Bubba Wallace or uh, Daryl Wallace Jr.'s um, 2018 STP Blue Johnson throwback car. So as you guys know, that there were two different versions of this of this STP car. The uh, the original one was actually was uh, the original one uh, that they actually planned on running this scheme all the way up until I believe the race weekend, and then they did a reveal. And I was like, what in the world's going on? Turns out where the um, where the blue was left, where the red was left off. They actually peeled off the blue and red was exposed. So, and it was basically the same exactly throwback that Eric Amarola had in 2015, which was underwhelming. I mean, I would have loved to see an all blue petty car for, um, for, um, for this race, but glad to see they made it to a diecast form. I mean, just, uh, man, what a great tease that was. But yeah, this is the original blue STP car. This was way before, um, STP, uh, you know, had that partnership with Richard Petty. Hence why, you know, maybe that's why they needed to put the red on there because, you know, STP red, Petty blue, great combination. But man, this car would have looked great in victory lane or at, at the race, actually, but they are making a race version 164 as well of the actual car that ran. But still, if you're a Richard Petty fan, this is a must get for sure. All right, and we are at the uh, final one, guys, for this wave. And I'll give you guys my ratings and opinions of this overall wave. We got yet another Watkins Glen Henrik Motorsports car to be talking about. It is Alex Bowman's number 88 Nationwide Children's Hospitals car. So, I mean, this is the second time we've got an 88 Nationwide Children's Hospital car in NASCAR Authentics with the, uh, along with the Dale Jr. one from 2017, which I did not got. I believe that was released in Wave 6 or uh, actually Wave 8, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't really been a big fan of these schemes. I mean, this car looks pretty nice, but um, I might pass on this one as well because it's not as interesting compared to the other uh, Alex Bowman schemes that we've had for this year. I mean, um, 
I mean, heck, I think uh, even the Lumar window film car looks better than this. I mean, just uh, this car just, I don't know. I mean, it's simple, but it's still lacking something. I mean, I, I, I can't really put my uh, forehead around it. But yeah, overall, guys, I think Wave uh, 1 for 2019 looks very promising. Um, some people are going to be disappointed that it does not have any 2019 cars. But if you guys saw the introduction to this video, I talked about why we don't have the 2019 cars in just yet. Um, it was basically the same uh, picture that they had from the uh, from the 2017 waves, I believe. Uh, well, we didn't got those cars until like wave two or three, I believe, or yeah, wave three, I believe. So, I mean, Lionel's pretty predictable when it comes to this stuff, but I mean, um, we'll just see what happens, guys. But uh, feel free to push your thoughts and comments, anything else you guys want to share about these uh, diecast reviews, uh, or uh, well, I mean, yeah, this overall review of the NASCAR Authentics wave. Probably gonna get every single car except for the, uh, like I just mentioned, I'm probably gonna get every single car except for the, uh, Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johns, Kick and Ranch, and the, uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital cars. But everything else, plan on getting, and I'll be, uh, once I get them, uh, I will do some diecast reviews. And also make sure to tune in to, uh, the NASCAR diecast new season nine premiere of 2019, which will begin right after this video, or depending whenever I upload it. So, uh, I hope you guys are all getting ready for the 24 hours of Daytona. I do got some other content to uh, show you guys with that. But um, yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this uh, wave review. And I will hopefully catch you on the uh, new next new season of the NASCAR Diecast News and some Wave 1 2019 NASCAR Authentics Diecast Reviews. This is Roger Bibri, the Diecast Guy, and I will see you guys next time.